Like and subscribe right now, or this spider will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Apollo 11 is a story well documented, but with so many people involved in the mission and the immense influence of the moon landing, there are a few facts and details that are known to a few and some that have been hidden from the general public by NASA and government officials. Today, we're looking at 10 secrets about the Apollo 11 moon landing. Let's begin. Number 10. First words. In Texas, it is the stuff of legend that Houston was the first word spoken on the moon. Only one problem with that idea, sadly, it's just not true. At 4.18 p.m. on July 20th, 1969, Neil Armstrong's voice crackled from the speakers at NASA's Mission Control in Houston. He said simply, the eagle has landed. With those words, the dream President John F. Kennedy voiced in 1961, putting humans on the moon by the end of the decade, had at last come true. But even those words weren't the very first ones to come out of any astronaut's mouth. The eagle has landed wasn't really the first sentence that was said on the moon either. According to the mission transcript, the first words were, contact light, spoken by Buzz Aldrin, as the Apollo lunar module's probes touched the surface of the moon, followed by a brief checklist before Armstrong spoke the famous words. Number 9. Planting the flag wasn't easy. When Apollo 11 astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin planted the United States flag on the moon more than 50 years ago, it represented a major feat of engineering. The flag on the moon is a great illustration of the fact that in space, nothing is simple. First of all, with virtually no atmosphere on the moon and therefore no wind, flags that fly freely on Earth would hang like limp cloth in the lunar environment. So engineers had to rethink flagpole design entirely. Next difficult thing? To plant the flag in the moon ground. Scientists at NASA had anticipated that the surface of the moon would be soft which would make it easier to plant the flagpole. But when the astronauts reached the moon, they were surprised by the fact that the surface was composed of hard rocks, making it harder to dig the pole into the ground. They were only able to put the pole only one inch into the ground and also had to be very careful while leaving so they wouldn't accidentally knock it over. Number 8. Anti-Diarrhea Drugs these days, we have the luxury of toilet seats, but back in the day, it was limited to only a few. If that was the case on Earth, imagine the astronauts who had to use the toilet in space. To tackle this complicated situation, astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin brought a smaller kit to the moon with them. It contained four stimulants, eight pills to treat diarrhea, two sleeping pills, four painkillers, and 12 tablets of aspirin, plus a bottle of eye drops. Armstrong and Aldrin took preventive doses of the anti-diarrhea medication, Flamitol, so that they wouldn't need a toilet. That's because the lunar module did not have one. Taking a dump on the moon wasn't an option either, so they had to resort to some hardcore ways. We hope the spacecraft they make these days have some kind of toilet in them, because even astronauts have to go when nature calls. Number 7. First Urination on the Moon Buzz Aldrin often claims to be the first person to urinate on the moon. This is a frequent point of discussion in interviews about his role in the historic mission. But what many people don't know is that the urination did not go according to plan. What's unfortunate is that when Neil landed the lunar module, he landed so softly that the legs, which were designed to compress, didn't. As a result, what was supposed to be a small step from the module to the surface was more of a giant leap. In the jolt of that surprising step down, Aldrin's urine collection device broke. So instead of going where it was supposed to, the liquid ended up collecting in one of his boots, which is kind of disgusting and disturbing even for an astronaut. When he walked around the lunar surface, he was kind of sloshing around, an historic moment for humankind indeed. Number 6. No Life Insurance Neil Armstrong estimated that the Apollo 11 mission only had a 50% chance of a successful landing. However, the quietly confident and cool under fire astronaut reckoned his chance of a safe return was a good deal higher. Despite this, no company offered life insurance to the astronauts because they didn't believe in their success, and NASA itself was barred from taking out insurance by law. Neil Armstrong and his crew came up with an innovative plan that would ensure their family's future, even if the mission failed and they could not return back to Earth. So, before their lift off to space, all three astronauts were quarantined and locked up in the plexiglass room for about a month. In the quarantine, they signed hundreds of autographs, space images embedded with their personal signatures that would act like postal covers. 
The idea was that these covers would become precious if they could not return back. These covers are now referred to as Apollo insurance covers, and to ensure that the covers hold great value, they stamped the envelopes and sent them back to their friends who took them to the mail to get them postmarked. Even though the crew made it back safely, the postcards were reportedly sold for as much as $30,000 at space memorabilia auctions. These astronauts sure were a smart bunch. Number 5. Aldrin Was Religious Once the lunar module landed at the Sea of Tranquility, Aldrin called back to Earth to inform everyone that they deserved a moment to think about what just happened and thank God. Then, Aldrin, who was an elder at the Webster Presbyterian Church in Webster, Texas, turned off his radio, opened the containers of bread and wine that he had brought with him, and read from the Gospel of John. Before he took communion, he read John 15, 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me, and I in him, will bear much fruit, for you can do nothing without me, he said. Aldrin wanted the experience to be shared on the live broadcast with the rest of his comments, but NASA discouraged the idea. See, at the time, NASA was fighting a lawsuit with activist Mandolin Murray O'Hare, an atheist advocate, who objected to government employees praying publicly. That meant that Buzz had to keep his religious views to himself. Number 4. The Eagle Was Running Out of Gas 1,300 feet above the moon's surface, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin began their final descent in the Eagle lunar module on the 20th of July. The astronauts weren't happy, but anxious when a fuel light blinked on. Still 100 feet or 30 meters above the ground, it was not what they needed. The Eagle's tank was nearly dry. The Eagle dropped 90 feet over the next 30 seconds, leaving the crew a further half minute of fuel to navigate the final 10 foot to the lunar surface. Neil was an ace pilot, and he was able to carefully stir the craft on the moon's surface and finally made the touchdown. It was a feat that succeeded by the finest of margins. Buzz Aldrin said that there were just 15 seconds of fuel left in the tank. That sure is some luck. Number 3. The flag wasn't the only thing left on the moon. Throwing away stuff is what makes us humans, sadly, so it wouldn't be a surprise that more than just a flag was left on the moon. The astronauts didn't just take things from the moon, they left things behind, including science experiments, tools, backpacks, boots, and food pouches. The astronauts also gave the moon a few special gifts. Neil Armstrong had brought a silicon disc the size of a 50-cent piece to leave on the moon. It contained a goodwill message from leaders of 73 countries written in tiny letters etched on the disc. The disc was placed inside of an aluminum capsule to protect it from harsh temperatures on the moon. Other than that, half of the moon landing module and their backpacks that had a few sentimental items were left behind for the aliens to explore. And with that, it's now time for today's subscriber pick. Today's photo was sent to us by a subscriber. If you ever come across a photo online and want to know more details about it, just send it over to us. We might even feature it on a future video. Number 2. This is actually a fake image of an alien-like creature on the moon, but we get the idea behind it. It is believed by a lot of conspiracy theorists that during the Apollo 11 mission, the astronauts saw aliens, or at least had some contact with something extraterrestrial on the moon. But to stop the world from freaking out, the government and NASA have kept the details to themselves. The theory is far-fetched, but you can never rule out anything when it comes to the government hiding secrets. What do you guys think? Did the Apollo 11 have any contact with extraterrestrial life on the moon? Number 1. A pen saved the crew's lives if it weren't for a small felt-tipped pen and the quick thinking of the astronauts, the outcome of the Apollo 11 mission could have ended in disaster. When they landed on the moon, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin had started collecting rock and dust samples, and they did that for almost three hours. A dull task for first moonwalkers, no? As they were climbing back into the lunar module in preparation for their return home, Aldrin hit the circuit breaker switch with the life support backpack on his suit. Armstrong and Aldrin did not think the circuit breaker would trip on liftoff, but they wanted to be sure. However, they didn't have anything to check with as they had disposed of all their tools to make the module lighter. Using what they had left, a pen, Aldrin activated the inside switch to engage the circuit breaker and trigger the engine. And that is how a pen was used to save the lives of the very first moonwalkers. Sadly, it couldn't save Michael Jackson. Which one of these facts did you find the most surprising? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.